Okay, good morning. This is Christian Bible Chapel. Welcome to our Sunday School lesson. Today we're going to pick up on our Sunday School lesson dealing with um, your packet that you should have got in mail by now. Uh, the Sunday, the Sabbath. All right. Now, before we are on page seven, if you're following us with your package, turn to page seven. At the bottom of the page, page seven, the Old Testament Sabbaths ends. That's on page seven, okay? Now, while you're turning to that, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for um, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the compassion of God. We pray, Father, that this day that we will honor you and we will worship you in spirit and truth. And we are grateful, dear God, for the salvation that you have provided through your son, Jesus Christ. That this day, many will turn to you and receive Christ as Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what I want to do first is, because I know we have many people, many, 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 many people who are skeptical about Sunday being the new Sabbath from the old Sabbath in the Old Testament. Because the first thing a person will say when you start talking about the Sabbath is that we're not under the law, we're under grace. And, you know, they're going to use that, Romans chapter 6, okay? But it's interesting that many people who object to the teaching of the Sunday being the, the new Sabbath, they try to be so very moral, okay, and adhesive to the scriptures, and they quote to you, uh, you're putting yourself back under the law. But they fail to understand that at the same time, see, what, 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 at the same time, they're saying that you're under the law because you are observing Sunday as the Sabbath, which the scripture does teach us. Now, they have justification in thinking that Romans chapter 6 and other passage when it says you're not under the law, but you're under, but you're under grace. Okay? The law cannot save you, true, and it never can save a person. Only thing that the law can do is bring you to Christ. That's proven in the book of Galatians. In Romans 7, 7, the law convinces us that we are sinners. That's the purpose of the law. It cannot save. It convinces and it brings you to Christ. Okay? Now, what I said earlier is that people say, oh, no, oh, no, you can't tell people that the Sunday is the Sabbath because you're putting them back under the law. We're not under the law. We're under grace. One, it's a failure to understand what that scripture means. Two, when we say you're not under law, but you're under grace, but they always talk about Sunday not being the Sabbath because the Sabbath is so close to the Old Testament and the Old Testament is law. Well, what about you who are so moral as Christians or non-Christians? What are you going to do about the scripture when it says thou shalt not commit adultery? That's part of the Ten Commandments. And it's part of the law of Moses. Thou shalt not steal. So the moment that we present to the class or to the church that Sunday is the Sabbath and you have to honor it as the Lord's day, the new day that began with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they, you have many people who are vigorously eager to say, that's putting people back under the law. But at the same time, we honor thou shall not commit adultery. We honor thou shall not steal and the rest of the commandments. So what are you doing then? If you don't want the fifth commandment that says the Sabbath, you know, honor the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath. But then you turn around and say the sixth, seventh, and eighth commandment, thou shall not kill, thou shall not commit adultery, thou but you honor those. So you can't have both. You, 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 can't, you can't be, uh, you can't have both. And you know why we are so offensive with adultery and 
stealing because it 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 it, it moves us. It, it disturbs the very fabric of our being. But Sunday doesn't because we're so used to doing anything and everything on the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath, which is the rest, that we ignore that commandment and try to keep the rest of them. And you notice the first three, four commandments, we tried very vigorously. Uh, we cannot keep, we, we're not subject to it. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Don't make you know, any graven images. I'm paraphrasing. And don't use the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. See those four, we just, it's so hard. But then when we look at the, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth commandment, whoa, we, we say, well, we shouldn't do that. You shouldn't steal. Don't steal. You're going to get locked up. Or don't commit adultery. Oh, that's so offensive. That's so defiling. That's so ugly. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't lie. You know, don't, 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 don't do anything to your neighbor or to your neighbor's wife. And see, we are very offensive to that, but we find it in our very being. Many of people do not find it offensive when we break the Sabbath. All right. Now I wanted to point that out because that's what the lesson is all about about honoring God throughout the Sabbath. Now, what we want to do, first of all, I told you to turn to page seven, but keep that right there. And there's a couple of scriptures that we're going to look at, and you might want to mark, write these down. I'm going to give you a scripture in Genesis and then in, 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 in the Gospels. So either you write them down or you follow me or review the tape. The first scripture we're going to look at is Genesis chapter two and verse one, Genesis two and one. Mark it down. Then we're going to look at Matthews chapter 28 and 1. Matthews 28 and 1. We're going to look at um, uh, Mark. We're going to look at Mark 16 and 2. Mark 16 and 2. Okay. And uh, just write these down real quickly. And we're going to look at uh, Mark 16 and 9. That's Mark 16 and 9. And Luke 24 and 1. And if you didn't get all those, we're going to we're going to go over them again. But first, turn turn your Bibles back to what we had discussed uh, previous Sundays in our Sunday school lesson uh, in Genesis chapter 2. I want to point out something very important because this Genesis 2, 1 is going to be compared to Matthews 28 and 1. Okay, so follow me. All right, here we go. In Genesis chapter 2. And verse uh, 1, 2, and 3, well, and 4, 1 to 4. Let me read that first, okay? Then we get some understanding of it. Thus the heavens heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. Now, be very careful with the words, because I want you to try and keep them in remembrance, because it's going to pop up again in the New Testament. All right. And on the seventh day, this is Genesis 2, 2, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. And he rest on the seventh day from all his work, which he made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he has rest from all his work, which God created and made. All right. Now, you heard what the scriptures just said. All right. Now, let's not get things blown out of proportion. Let's not just close the book and just ignore the infallibility of the word of God. This is God's word. Regardless of what society, the government, and people are saying, this is God's word. If you're a Christian, you need to honor God's word. If you're not saved, God is still your creator. You still honor his word. Now, listen to what, listen to what the scriptures are saying, okay? Number one, God ended his work on that day, okay? He rests on that day, 
he blessed that day. Okay? He sanctified that day. Those are the things he did. Genesis 2, verses 1 to 4. Now, turn over to Matthew's chapter 28 and look at verse 1. Okay? Matthew's 28 and verse 1. Listen to what it says. In the end of the Sabbaths, now we remember last week, we recorded and let you know, and you can go back and review the tape now. We recorded last week, according to the Greek New Testament, okay, the Old Testament was the Greek Septuagint, the Hebrew written in Greek, Old Testament Septuagint. Then the Greek here is not a single day uh, Sabbath, it's Sabbaths. At the end of the Sabbaths, all right, because we see here that the scriptures is teaching that when Christ died on the cross, now follow me now, he ended his work. See the pattern there now. See the pattern from, I told you to remember Genesis 2, right? God rests from his work. Here in Matthew 28 and 1, Christ ended his work of redemption. Okay, see the pattern? Okay, so here in verse 1 of Matthew 28, the end of the Sabbaths, in other words, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it ended all the old Sabbaths of ways, Passover, ceremony laws, ordinances. Colossians tells us in Colossians 2 that he nailed it to the cross. He finished the redemptive work. He did away with all the sacrifices there will be no more sacrifices for sins. Symbolically, method, method, metaphoric, or whatever, Christ is the end of the Sabbaths of the Old Testament. He is the end of the sacrifices. He is the end of the Passover. It is the end of the, of, of, of the ordinances and all the ceremony laws. Because all the ceremony laws, the Passover and ordinances, were symbolic of the coming of Christ. He fulfilled all that. So we don't need any more, particularly that type of Sabbath. We don't need any more of that particular Passover. You know, going every 50 day to Jerusalem to honor the Passover. We don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to travel to Jerusalem to to honor God, to honor Christ, uh, you know, on the Passover, which a lot of people make a pilgrim to Israel for whatever purpose it is. Christ says, I ended all that. Why are you doing that? You observe days and months and weeks. And what are you doing? You're going back. See, when it says observing days, months, and weeks, it's saying you, you're falling back under the law of ordinances and ceremonies, which Christ abolished on the cross. So why are you going back to weak and beggarly elements? All this is in the book of Galatians now, if you take time to read it. But the end of the Sabbaths, it began to dawn to a new way of thinking and a new way of living. That's what, see, it's hard for us as English people, German people, Russians, Chinese, Koreans, you know, old English people, Britain and Italians and French and, and, and Cubans and, and both North and South Americans are as Canadians, Canadians and Alaskans and, and, and per, those who live in Peru and, and Central America to grip this because we are basically following the pattern of our language. But the Bible was not written in those particular nations and races and nationalities I just named. The Bible was written in and quoted and used as Greek. Now to understand what 
the apostles and what Jesus is teaching us, we have to have some concept, grammatic concept, culture concept, historical concept of the Greek in order to understand this. That's why we have a problem with Matthews 28. And it says in the end of the Sabbath, it appears, see in English translation, King James, I'm reading it. It appears that this is what, what, it, what, it, what we, we take in as what Matthews 28 means. This is what it means. Just like Friday leaves and Saturday comes, Saturday leaves and Friday leaves. This is what we get the concept, the end of the Sabbath. But that's not what the Greek is meaning for us to understand. Because if it was, then it's, it's not comparable to Matt Genesis chapter 2. And you see, I started out with Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, to give you the backdrop how that God, Jehovah God, finished his work, okay? He rested on that day. He sanctified that day. Now, here we come to the New Testament. When Christ rose from the grave, what did he do? He finished his work. He sanctified that day, okay? He authorized the people from henceforth now to start honoring God on that day, which is Sunday, first day of the week, okay? In the end of the Sabbath, it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. And again, see, the word week is not even in the Greek there. It's, it's not. It's, it's the first day of the Sabbath. The word week there is a different translation. It's, it's a different word. It's the word Sabbath. It's the word, you know, rest. The first day of the rest. It's the beginning of a new day dawning that we would begin to worship God through Christ Jesus on this particular day. As God finished his work, Genesis chapter 2, Christ finished his work. And that's what this means. Now, I told you to turn to uh, Mark chapter 16. In Mark 16, almost the same thing. Mark 16 and 2. And early, very early in the morning, in the first day of the week, again, the translators use the word week when it should have been the Sabbath. It's a new Sabbath now. I, I, I really don't understand. They use the Texas Rectus, okay, and they use the uh, Greek translation, I, but for some reason, they put that word weak there. Because, see, as English people, okay, we say certain words in our vocabulary and grammar that's different than what the Greek says. So I imagine that's how they took the word week instead of the word Sabbath, okay? It doesn't do anything against inspiration or infallibility. It's just that God allowed them to translate it like that. It is up to us as Christians, theologians, Bible teachers, Sunday school teachers, ministers of God, the man of God, to study the word of God so we can rightly divide the word of God, right? Now, I told you also to turn to Mark, what, 16 and 9. Um, and Mark 16 and 9 is right there across the page. Now, when Jesus was risen early in the first day, see, that is again, first day of the week. See, as as English people, as a, see, because English was, dom now is, as since 16 something, it was dominating the world. Okay, you know, of course. I mean, there was French back in the 15th, 16th, there's all, you know, it's been, there's French, Portuguese, uh, Canadians, and different languages that were not Canada, you know, okay. But 
it was French, it was Portuguese, it was Spanish, it was English, and, and but the dominant language was, was as far as was Latin and English, okay? And people responded in that. So therefore, that's why the word weak is used to help those of the general population to read. But the reading of that language at that time throws off the Greek translation, which is Sabbath. At the end of the Sabbath, so you must see in order to keep the pace of the scripture, rightly dividing the word of God. That's why I went to Genesis 2 and to bring you to Matthews 28, then Mark 16 and 2, and now Mark 16 and 9. Then we look at Luke chapter 24. What we got? Luke 24. Let me get my, my notes here. I don't want to misquote this. I don't want to misteach this here. Um, Luke 24 and 1. Where is that? There it is right there. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre or grave, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain uh, others with them. The women came. Okay. Uh, they, they, again, we have Sabbath, Sabbath, Okay, Sabah, which is S H S H A B B A W T H. That's one way of saying Sabbath. And then there's week or seven, which is Shaboah, Shaboah, which is S H A W B O O A H. But they put the word Shaboah there, which is week, instead of Shabbat which is Sabbath, S-H-A-B -A -B hyphen B-A-W-T-H. And in the Greek form, the two words are different. So they put the word week there instead of the word Sabbath, which is Sabbath in English, Sabbath, which is rest. The Hebrew word English is rest. So, okay. All right. Now, to the point that I want to bring out, at the bottom of the page seven in our in our paper here, uh, if you follow me, you can you can uh, um, email me if you want the package to follow us in our lesson or to review what I'm talking about. Uh, Saint Harris one at gmail.com. But in Genesis, see in Genesis chapter one verse thirty one all the way to Genesis chapter two four, it bears this out. See the Sabbath started at creation. It didn't start at the Ten Commandments. It was put there. God allowed Moses. Well, let's not say God allowed. Well, God did allow Moses to write it. But the thing is that God told God wrote the Ten Commandments on stones, right? And that was one of the Ten Commandments. But it didn't have its beginning there in Exodus chapter 20, as we know, Exodus 20 and, and Deuteronomy. But the Sabbath started at creation and was added to the Ten Commandments by God given to Moses. Jehovah God, yes, added and allowed Moses to incorporate it in the Ten Commandments. But the Sabbath didn't have its beginning in the Ten Commandments. It had its beginning in Genesis chapter 2. Okay? So you really do not have any justifiable meaning saying that, oh, we're not under law, we're under grace. Because the Sabbath really was in Genesis chapter 2, not Exodus chapter 19, as far as Exodus 20, when God gave the law to Moses. All right. Now, to fulfill, to, to, to let you know what I'm talking about, I'm not just throwing things out there because that's the way it is and many teaching assignments and many classes and all right, but in Exodus chapter 20, it says in verse 8, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. It didn't say, thou shalt not, thou shalt keep the Sabbath. It didn't say that. Remember what it says now. Listen, look at it, verse, Exodus 20 and verse 8. Out of all the other commandments, it says, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt, 
thou shalt not, thou shalt. But when it comes to the, the, the Sabbath, okay, Exodus 20 and verse 8, remember the Sabbath. What? Well, there's a difference because the Sabbath had already been brought about, introduced way back there in Genesis. And 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 I'm I'm reading it. And the seventh day, here it is. And well, let me see. In Genesis one thirty one, let me read that. I'm I'm, trying, I'm proving this point here. In Genesis one thirty one, it says, "And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. The evening and the morning were the sixth day." Right. Thus, the heavens and the earth. This is Genesis chapter two. Were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rest on the seventh day from his all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. All right? So you see here that remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. So all the, all would, the commandments here in chapter Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, is a perpetual command for us because it was written in stone. Identify that it is a perpetual thing that we do, not something that was under the Old Testament and we all, we're under the grace and we're under the, the dispensation of the church or age so-called and we don't need to honor uh, uh, the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath and well, where do we justify ourselves in believing that and teaching that? See, we're so eager to down the Sabbath because it's part of the Ten Commandments and it's part, you know, it's Old, Old Testament that when it goes on and keep on reading here, when it says, honor your father and mother, we're we going to ditch that too. Or it says, thou shalt not kill. We're we going to throw that out the bucket too, throw that out too. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. We're going to throw that out too. Uh, thou shalt not steal. See these things? We are very attentive and offensive. When we see a child, when we see a child disrespect their parents, we say, oh, you're not what? Honoring your father. See? Uh, when we, when we, when, when, when on the news or when we see, hear about people killing it says, thou shalt not kill. Oh, that is so disturbing. Oh, that's bad to kill somebody. Oh, that's so offensive. Thou shalt not commit adultery. When the man or the, the women or the word adultery here is ponia, which encompasses all sexual activity outside of marriage. And it's, it's offensive to us. It's offensive. And we, we just get whacked up, we get blown out of proportion when that happened in the marriage because the marriage vow has been broken and this and that and no matter what, that's hey, that's wrong. And then we say, thou shalt not steal. See how we honor those but back up to verse 8, God says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days you shall work and oh, well, we can't. That's under the law. That's We're under grace now. But look at verse 12, honor your father. Verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Verse 14, commit, thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 15, thou shalt not steal. Verse 16, thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. You tell you swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth will hold you, help your God. I do. See, we honor that, but we won't honor verse 8. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. All right, let's look at our page here. Bottom of page seven. Okay, the Old Testament ends. The Old Testament Sabbath ends. And it's clarified that in Matthews, and as we try to reiterate to you in Matthews chapter 28, all right? See how I'm trying to stay adhesive to the scriptures so you won't, throw it back at me and call me and write to me and say, hey, you, you, you. no, it's the scriptures. And it's not, and, and, and see, it's not just me quoting the scriptures, 
but the scriptures I'm using to prove the scriptures is the scriptures which gives us understanding. And if I was getting my own opinion and understanding of the scriptures, then you have something to talk about. But if a scripture bear witness with another scripture and tells you the understanding of that scripture and give you the meaning for that scripture of the old in light of those scriptures in the new, then what 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 can you argue about? Returning to Matthew 28 and 1, let us examine the phrase that has first use of the word Sabbath. It says, in the end of the Sabbaths, how long has the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath been observed? All throughout the Old Testament, the Sabbath has been observed. And I remember now, it didn't start with Moses. The Sabbath did not start with Moses and the children of Israel. Had it had, then we can sort of justify saying, oh, that's under the law. But then it still is no, it's still weak. Okay. Because the Sabbath started in Genesis 2. Okay. All right. And we articulated that through the scriptures, not my teacher. Look at verse uh, page 8 now. All right, flip over. So God gave a reason why he kept saying seventh day and he rested on the seventh day and he ceased from his work on the seventh day and he sanctified seventh day and God rest on the seventh day. Why, why Genesis 2, Jehovah God, through Moses, who is the pen writer here, the author of it, as far as the writer of the first five books of Moses, the first five books. And why did God tell Moses to write it down that way? I, you know, certain things that God uh, made sure, he made sure that the human being that wrote the original scriptures now, didn't make any mistakes. And that was very, very marvelous in, for God to make sure that when Moses wrote Genesis, and Gen Moses wasn't even there, <laughs> but you know, the story says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay. Moses was the prop, mighty prophet of God. He even the, the the Islamic, the Muslims, the a lot of the religions, they acknowledge Moses. Oh, Moses is the man. You know, I mean, no matter what the religion it is, I mean, that respects Moses, he is the man. He was top notch. All right, Moses. All right. So God gave a reason why he did this. It was a picture of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. A man rests from physical work on a Sabbath, even as he is to rest in the Lord Jesus Christ, cease from try, uh, trying to become saved by spiritual works. He was to trust entirely on the saving work of the coming Messiah. God, Jehovah God, rested. See, I have to repeat because it's a pattern here from the old to the new. See, the Old Testament enlightens and brings up to date to the New Testament. And the New Testament shows what the foreshadowing, the foreshadow of what the Old Testament is. And it brings out Christ. Everything. See, the sacrifices, the Passover, the everything, that the, even the, the flower, the way the tabernacle was built, the materials used for the tabernacle, the priests, his, his, his robe, his, his garments, the position of the priests, everything, everything recorded as far as under the ordinances and sacrifices and everything, it was a metaphoric pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus filled every eye odor, every dot, every eye, and he crossed every T and fulfilling everything. Now, the Pharisees, they knew that. This man trained in everything. He knew the scriptures. Oh my goodness, he knew the scriptures. And Jesus fulfilled everything. Just like in the Old Testament, God fed the people manna from heaven. Jesus says, 
I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. I know your fathers ate bread from God, is it? But I'm the true bread of God. See that? I'm the, and, and God provided them with light. And Jesus in the New Testament, I'm the light of the world. He that walketh in light is not going to walk in darkness. Right? So it, what everything that was picturized and performed in the Old Testament, Christ came, he fulfilled it. So it's the same thing towards the Sabbath. And that's why we're trying to get you to see that when the scripture says on the first day of the week, upon the first day of the week, at the dawn of the day of the first day of the week, see that? The dawn is a new beginning now. The old Sabbath is gone. The way it was constructed, the way it was fearful, worship and honored. And now today, God is a spirit. We honor him, not in fear. Okay. And the scripture teaches that in the book of Timothy. All right. So God declares in Ezekiel 20 and 12, moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So it's the Old Testament in which God gave the Sabbath to only the children of Israel. But now the Sabbath is for all those who have trusted Jesus Christ as Savior because it's a new Sabbath. It's the dawn of a new day in which the women came to the sepulchre. It's the dawn of something new now. The old Sabbath is gone. The new Sabbath began. See the, see the difference, okay? So God is instructing us that the Old Testament Sabbath was signs pointing to the fact that salvation is entirely of Jehovah of Jehovah God. This explains why Deuteronomy 5.15 declares, and remember that you was a servant in the land of Egypt and that the Lord God brought thee out hence through a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God command thee to keep the Sabbath. When God brought Israel out of Egypt from the house of bondage, he was pointing to a spiritual reality that salvation is of God. See, everything that God did to help Israel typified Jesus Christ, who fulfilled that. So, with a stretched out arm, with a mighty hand, I delivered you. What did Moses say? when Pharaoh and them was coming and the children of Israel were full of fear. What did he say? Stand still and see the salvation of God. Deliverance. We today need to stand still. Acknowledge to God that we have broken his law and repent of our sins because the only way we can be saved is through Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. All right. So with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, I delivered you. So it's the same thing. If you've been saved, if you are saved, you are saved because God stretched out his arm. And with a mighty hand, now that mighty hand and stretched out arm is symbolic of Jesus dying on the cross being buried and rose again. And that's how you and I are saved through the salvation of God. And there's no works. Israel didn't do anything to defeat the Egyptians and come out of bondage of Egypt, just like you and I can't do anything to come out of bondage of sin and Satan and the world. All right. See the, see the comparison there. All right. Look at midway on, we're on page eight, midway. All right. Thus, the Hebrew word Sabbath is also the Hebrew word for rest. And, and then you can go to beginning in uh, Hebrews, the, the epistle, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter three and four, there remain as a rest to the people of God. The word rest is Sabbath. There remain a Sabbath for the people of God. See, it is, it is marvelous. See, all you have to do is apply the Greek understanding to the words and you will be so excited 
and what Jesus says, what the apostles says, and what the Bible is saying, there remains a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. Now, he's talking to the Hebrews on this side of the cross because the word rest, see, we think rest is, hmm, boy, I am so comfortable. See, just like we think, Rest as Sabbath means don't stay in bed all day. Don't go worship God. Don't just relax. And sh that's part of it. But the main part of it is reflection, meditation, reading, absorbing, being saved. All this takes part on the Sabbath because that's what Jesus, that's what Jehovah God did in the first six days. Then he rest. He sanctified. It. He blessed it. Now, when we come to the New Testament, identical thing, same identical thing. Thanks be to God. So the law of the Sabbath in the Old Testament was rigorously adhered to. I mean, it was, whew, it was to the point that remember reading in Numbers chapter 15, we had the page eight at the bottom, Numbers 15, the guy was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. And um, the people brought him before Moses. And Moses didn't know what to do, so he took the, the guy to God. And God says, kill him. Now, that was hard. <laughs> you know, you're picking up sticks, and you, you're on the Sabbath day, you're picking up sticks, and God says, no, you destroyed my Sabbath. See, the thing is, we must not destroy the Sabbath of God on this side of the new Sabbath. And we do so when we enact and participate in things we should have done from Saturday back to Monday. Now, that see, that is not to say, see, that is not to say that you can. See, that's the difference between Old Testament manner of observing the Sabbath and the New Testament manner of Sabbath. Let me point, let me point this out very plainly now, okay, before we move on. <laughs> this man was picking up sticks. And see, this was a new thing to the children of Israel. They say, well, you ain't supposed to work. You ain't supposed to do anything. This man picking up sticks. They brought, told Moses. They brought him to Moses. Moses went to God. God says he broke my Sabbath. Stone him. See, the Sabbath in the Old Testament was, you you got in some big trouble with Jehovah God. Oh, you listen, I rest on the Sabbath day. I rest, you're going to rest. And if you break it, you're going to be punished. You're going to be judged. Now, what is the difference from back then and then? Now, let's, here's, this is how marvelously, the scripture brings it out. You notice in the life of Christ, <laughs> this is something, the life of Christ. You notice when Jesus took the boys and said, y'all, come on, let's go in the cornfield and pluck some corn. Let's eat. You know, and this was the Sabbath day. And they're plucking corns and rubbing their hands together. And mm, this fried chicken is real good. And they're cooking it in the grease and putting it in the boil and boiling the corn and cornbread and all. And, and all this was on the Sabbath day. Now, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm trying to make it so you can understand my English dialect. Okay. And here comes the Pharisees saying, why do you disciples do such a, why do you, you and your disciples doing something that's not commanded in the law? y'all breaking the Sabbath. He ain't going to do nothing on the Sabbath. What are y'all doing? All right. See, the picture is the Sabbath. You notice that Jesus said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I know what the Sabbath is really all about. I know what Moses gave you in the under the law. But I see you are misinterpreting what the scriptures meant it to be. All right. Now, I know that Jehovah God, this is Jesus, who is God in flesh. Wow. Okay. I know I told Moses to punish that man for breaking the Sabbath. I know I told him that. All right. But let me tell you this. We vigorously, morally, keep certain parts of scriptures, but then other parts of the scriptures, oh, 
I can't stand that. I ain't, I ain't going to ignore that anger. So what Jesus was saying to the people, look, look here, look here, look. If, if an ass was walking and stumbled into a hole and all this happened on the Sabbath day, would you not get a rope and pull the ass out of the hole? If a man was sick and paralyzed since birth and you had a way to heal him and give him nourishment and take him to the clinic or the hospital, wouldn't you do that? See, the Sabbath was made to honor God, not man, not, see, and we blow it out of proportion. So Jesus, when he came on the scene and he was doing these things for a reason and for a purpose on the side. See, Jesus could have waited the next day. He purposely told the disciple, let's go in the cornfield and eat the corn. That was the Sabbath. He purposely healed the sick on the Sabbath day. He purposely raised the dead. He did things to show to these religious people, as we have now today, these moral, upright, standing people, as we have today, that, look, guys, you're putting the Sabbath, and you're making the Sabbath, and you're exploding it, and you're exploiting it, and you're exploding it, and you're giving it your own terminology and understanding what I'm what I'm trying to do and what I'm saying to you. All right. So when Jesus, when Jesus healed that person, oh, you breaking the Sabbath because you ain't supposed to be healing. Yeah, you know, just like today. Oh, you ain't supposed to work. You ain't supposed to cut the grass. Well, you ain't supposed to go outside. You ain't supposed to go to the hospital. You ain't supposed to go to the clinic. You ain't supposed to go shopping for food. You ain't supposed to go and get your medicine. See, see how we are just Pharisaic. I remember that back in 1979 when I first started preaching, that was one of my favorite sermons. I would always pop up and preach when I go as a guest speaker. I would go and tell people the Pharisee in me. And, and, and it's true. We, we, we have Pharisaic ways in us. We got such moral, religious way, ways in us, and it's contrary to what the scripture is saying. See, Jesus is not saying you can't do those things on the Sabbath, but those things which you could in your power could have done other days do, but he doesn't condemn the nurse that goes to the hospital. He doesn't condemn you going to get food on in the market on Sunday. He doesn't condemn you feeding your dog, all right? Walking the dog, you know? Or doing this on the, on Sunday. And that's the point. It's the dawn of the new day. You're vigorously trying to heave to Old Testament rituals and the hardships because the reason why, now remember this now, as in Galatians, what purpose served the law? What was purpose? It was added till the seed should come. This is Galatians now. This is scripture now. But when the seed come, you're no longer under that bondage. And that's why in Galatians chapter four, he started, Paul started talking about the bondswoman and the free woman. Now, it, but then Paul says, don't use that as a license, as in Romans chapter 6. And that's why he said in Galatians 5 and 1, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the law of bondage. See, it's the bondage that Christ has freed you from. The rigorous, strange to, to, it was a purpose to bring you to Christ, to show you your sinfulness, to show you are a sinner. But at last, to many people, as the Pharisees, the law didn't show them their, their, their hypocrisy. And we got a lot of that in church today. We got a lot of that in religion today, hypocrisy, pretending. 
hypocrites. Now, they're in the church. They're also in religions, too. All right? and, and Jesus used these principles, page 8 at the bottom, Galatians chapter 4 and 5, or 3, 4, and 5, read it for your home assignment, to show us that. Now, we're going to... Um, we're going to get ready to close because our time is up. So, but we see here that on the Sabbath, the last Sabbath of the Old Testament era, we're on page nine, top page, page nine, top page there, first paragraph. On the last Sabbath of the Old Testament era, Christ, who is our Sabbath, had in one sense completed the work God has assigned him in demonstrating how he bore the wrath of God on behalf of all who were to be saved. All who were to be saved. Christ died on the cross for all the elect, for the believers, those who would be saved. Verified it in Acts chapter 20. All right, Acts 20 and 20, 2019 and 20. Okay, and I don't want to uh, sort of miss misquote that i can easily uh, read it but i mean say it but i i have a tendency to always want to try and prove it okay okay it says take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock talking to the elders over which the holy spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of god which he has purchased the church of god which god purchased through by his own blood. See, he purchased the church. He died on the cross for the church. Right? He died for the elect. From all those, from Adam to the close out of human history, all those who would be saved, the atoning death of Christ which is limited because it's an election. It is a number in which Christ died for. And you got to understand, especially in Romans and in Corinthians, when you use the word many and us and they, as in Isaiah 15, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 53. You gotta read it in the context of the Hebrew in Isaiah and the context of the Greek in Romans 5 and in 2 Corinthians 5. Those words, many, us, they, us. You gotta understand what that means now because salvation is not universal. All right? and universal means every human being that will ever live will get a chance to be saved because they have a choice. That there's no such thing as free will salvation, free will, free will, you know, you, you can make the choice and, and it's up to you. you know, well, will you, you gonna save yourself? Of course not. So, well, you, thou must save and thou alone. The songwriter says that. Now, next week, the Lord's willing, next week in our Sunday school lesson, as you bring back, we're gonna pick up on page nine, so you can read page nine through uh, 15 for your, your home assignment for your Sunday school, all right? And we bless the Lord and we thank the Lord. Coming up at 11.15 um, is uh, our worship service here on Facebook and YouTube uh, at 11.15, all right? God bless. Okay.